Good afternoon, everyone. So welcome again for on the weekly teaching on advanced eco education. So today we will be talking about uh, mindful regurgitation. So very, very common topic. And it's one of the very important topic because it's been asked very frequently. It's been asked very, very frequently in the exam in, 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 in different ways. So it's very, very important to go through this topic uh, thoroughly. So in this talk, I'll be talking about etiology, pathophysiology of MR and echocardiographic assessment and how to assess its severity. And I will do a few cases after that. First of all, to understand the etiology and the mechanism of mitral regurg, it's very, very important to understand the anatomy of mitral valve, because based on that, you can explain the etiology and the mechanism. So as we all know that the mitral valve apparatus is made of mitral annulus, anterior and posterior mitral valve leaflet, commissures, cordy tendony, and the papillary muscles. So any abnormality of the mitral valve apparatus can cause mitral regurge. So to start with mitral annulus, so any dilatation or calcification of mitral alunets can cause mitral regurge. And if you go to mitral leaflet, which is, I think, very, very important to diagnose primary MR. So any degenerative or myxomatic disease, rheumatic heart disease, flail, prolapse, or infection, inflammation, or infiltrative disease of the leaflets can cause uh, mitral regurgitation. In terms of cordy tendony, any rupture of cordy tendony or any elongation of the cordy tendony can cause that. And the same with the papillary muscles. Any ischemia, rupture, calcification of fibrosis of fat muscles can cause MR. And uh, the last one in terms of ventricle myocardium. So any ischemic cardi cardiomyopathy, non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, and sometimes you know, related to you know, chemotherapy as well, it can cause uh, MR. So mechanism of MR, we can uh, classify based on the mitral valve pathology or also the movement of the mitral valve leaflets. So if we classify based on the mitral valve leaflet pathology can divide it into primary and the secondary MR. So in the primary mitral regurg, so it's mainly the intrinsic abnormality of the leaflet which causes MR. And, but whereas in the secondary MR, it results from the distortion of mitral valve apparatus because of either left atrial or left ventricle or both, you know, remodeling of, uh, of these chambers. So again, if you divide into primary and secondary MR, so in primary, it's mainly the, leaf, uh, the abnormality of the leaflet. So again, any degenerative myxomatic disease, any prolapse, flail, infection, inflammation, congenital problems can cause primary MR. Whereas in the secondary MR, it's the, the ventricular remodeling. So ischemic cardiomyopathy, non-ischemic or annular dilatation like AF and restrictive cardiomyopathy causing that. Whereas in the second classification, you can also classify MR based on the mitral leaflet motion, you know, carpentry classification. In the type one, the leaflet motion is, and the position is normal. So I've just shown it that you can further divide it into primary and secondary MR. So in the carpentry type one, so primary MR like leaflet perforation or cleft, whereas the secondary MR you know, annual dilatation causing the atrial MR or non ischemic cardiomyopathy. Whereas in type two carpentry classification, there's an excess leaflet motion, for example, mitral valve prolapse. Whereas in type three, there's a restricted motion of the leaflet. If the restriction is both in the systole and diastole, that's a type three A, where if there's a restriction only in the systole, that's a type three B. So three A, mainly it's a, a mitral annular calcification or rheumatic valve disease, whereas 3B is ischemic cardiomyopathy. So we can divide in both ways. So now, now the eco, echocardiographic assessment. So first of all, 2D mode. So in the 2D mode, there are mainly three important things we need to assess. The first thing, mitral valve apparatus as such, to understand the mechanism and the etiology what's causing the MR. Second thing is the systolic function of left ventricle because it's very, very important to uh, 
measure the SSOLI function to understand the hemodynamic related to MR, hemodynamic effect. And the third thing is the effect of MR. So effect of MR, it depends whether it's acute MR or it's a chronic MR. So if it's a chronic MR, so there would be dilated left atrium. Left atrium, the pressure may be normal or could be high depending on the staging. And uh, the left ventricle would be dilated with the volume overload pattern. Volume overload pattern. And if it's acute MR, yeah, hi. We just started, sorry. Um, whereas in acute MR, so they would there would not be much LV dilation, but the uh, LA pressure would be high. So all these effects you can make out in 2D mode. Now coming to the color flow Doppler. So there are three things we need to measure in color flow. So first is re vegetation jet area, your vena contractor, and then your flow convergence. So first of all, jet area. So jet area is, is very, very good in excluding MR because if there's no um, any colored jet, then you can exclude that. But if it's there, based on that, you cannot classify the severity of MR because as it's depending on the loading conditions and also what's the mechanism of MR, for example, it's a central eccentric jet. But the direction of jet may provide some important clues that what's the mechanism of MR. And if you're just measuring the area, so more than eight centimeters is severe, less than four centimeters square is mild. But if you're comparing this jet area and the percentage of left atrial area, then more than it's not changing, so more than 50%. So more than 50% is severe, whereas less than 20% is mild. Now coming to vena contractor. So this is your jet. So this is the narrowest portion of the jet as is, you know, emerges from the orifice. It's just very helpful in distinguish from mild to severe MR. The good thing is, you know, it's independent of the flow rate and the driving pressure because it's a kind of, it's a fixed orifice here. And normally we check it, you know, measure it in the periscope along exit in zoom mode. The, Pitfalls is that if there are multiple jets, then you will underestimate if you're you know, doing this measurement. And now these days they're saying it's not the circular, you know, not necessarily it's a circular area. So if you measure the vena contractor area instead of width, width, that's more accurate. So if you're measuring, you know, just the width, which is you know mentioned in the AC classification. So more than 0.7 uh, centimeter is severe MR, whereas less than 0.3 centimeters mild. Now coming to flow convergence in OPISA. So, so this is your vena contractor here, and it's located proximal to the regurgitant orifice. It's ideal if you're having central jet. So you need to you measure it in apical four chamber you know, zoom on the mitral valve leaflets. And your baseline, so you need to drop your baseline, you know, down to 30, 40 centimeter towards the direction of the jet. For example, it's if you're doing transthoracic, you need to drop it down. But if it's transesophageal, it means you need to, you know, you need to go up here because it's towards the direction of the jet. And you measure the radius from vena contractor to the first aliasing velocity. So you can see first aliasing velocity is it's a blue color here. So first blue color is coming here. That's the width, width you would be measuring. So for severe, more than one centimeter and for mild, less than 0.3 centimeter. But, you know, there's so many pitfalls, you know, in terms of measuring uh, PISA formation. So first of all, it's, uh, you know, small calculation. So the error could be significant because then you will be squaring the radius. And if your jet is eccentric or there are multiple jets, then it may not be the correct measurement. If you're not getting a good sphere, it's a, if it's in a, it's a you know, non-hemispheric shape, then it may not be accurate. So that's why, you know, PISA, we don't do it on a routine basis, but this is one thing, you know, we can measure. 
continuous wave Doppler is very, very important, very simple to do, and they, we can get a lot of information from that. So mainly two things. So what's the profile of your Doppler, uh, the signal, and what's the density of the Doppler signal? So in terms of profile, if it's a truncated triangular jet with early peaking velocity, so it suggests there's a significant regard because if there's rapid rise in lateral pressure. And in terms of density, so you need to compare the density with the, as comparison to the anti-grid flow. So if it's a 10 signal, it suggests a significant MR. If it's a faint signal, it's a mild MR. The jet maximum velocity, it's not useful in terms of to uh, suggest the severity of MR but it does provide the important inf information about the hemodynamic consequences of MR. In severe MR, most of the times the velocity is between four to six cent or four to six meter per second. But if it's less than four, it may suggest that as a patient is shocked or there's elevated capital pressure from, because of significant leverage. So this is just an example left side you know, it's a very faint signal and parabolic shape, so it's mild MR, whereas on the right side, very dense signal, triangular shape, so it suggests your severe MR. So pitfalls, again, if it's not a central jet, sorry, if it's a central jet, it will appear dense, whereas the eccentric jet may not show that, you know, dense signal. It's very important to align your Doppler angle and also your gain, so because your gain can change the density. Pulse wave, so a few important things to measure in terms of pulse wave Doppler. So first thing, if your mitral E velocity is more than 1.2 meter per second, it may suggest there's a significant regurge. And pulse wave Doppler, you know, I'll be talking about that in the next few slides. Uh, so you, you, need, you can measure your uh, left ventricle stroke volume, mitral annulus, you know, stroke volume to measure all the, your quantitative measures. We'll be talking about those in the next slides. So important thing to measure by pulse wave Doppler is the pulmonary vein flow. So on the left side, the first image, so this is your normal flow, S wave is bigger than the T wave and the atrial reversal. So if you're getting this, uh, then it means your uh, MR is not severe and your left atrial pressure is low. In the second one, so there's a blunting of systolic wave. So either it suggests that there's a moderate MR or it could be because of diastolic dysfunction. Just based on that, uh, that you know, there's a blunting of systolic wave, you cannot say it's because of moderate MR until you have excluded your diastolic dysfunction. More specific is in systolic reversal. So whenever there's a systolic reversal um, of this S wave, so there's a more than 85% chance that there's a possibility of severe MR. So this is one of the very specific and important parameter to measure. So pitfalls, again, if it's eccentric MR. And uh, if it's eccentric MR, it's suggested that we should measure it in more than one pulmonary veins. So at least two pulmonary veins. If there's a reversal, then still you can say that. And other pitfalls, atrial fibrillation, high elevation, and of course, Doppler angle is important in most of the measurements. So in terms of quantitative measurements, we don't do it on the routine basis, but in a few cases, it can be very helpful when there's a disagreement between different parameters. So by doing these five measurements, we can do all the quantitative measurements. So first thing on the left side, so LVOT diameter and your LVOT VDI to check the LVO, uh, LVOT stroke volume. On this right side, your mitral annulus width and your mitral annulus BTI to calculate the stroke volume through the mitral annulus. And extreme right, your VTI of the mitral regurge. What does that mean is, so step one, so we calculate the regurge volume. So that's a stroke volume through the mitral annulus minus stroke volume through the LVOT. That's your regurge volume. Then you will calculate your regurge fraction. So just regurg volume divided by your stroke volume through the mitral annulus will give you regurg fraction. Then you calculate effective regurgent orifice area. So again, regurg volume divided by 
your VTI of MR, you can calculate your um, effective regal orifice area. So these things you don't do it routine basis because there's so many because there's so many calculations involved. So there are very high chances that there will be high chances of you know doing error. But uh, if there's a disagreement between different parameters, this can these things can be measured. So again, these are the you know parameters for uh, mild to severe um, MR for regurgent volume more than 60 mils, fraction more than 50%, and orifice area more than 0.4 centimeter is severe. <clears throat> and this is just our AC, AC guidelines of suggesting of mild, moderate, severe um, MR. And uh, so specific criteria for severe MR as we discussed in the previous slides. So if there's obvious pathology like fluid leaflet, your vena contractor with more than 0.7 centimeter, PISA more than one, and your uh, regal jet area more than 50% and systolic flow reversal. So all these suggest your severe MR. So that was my bit. Now it's your time to talk. So we'll go through four cases. Who's gonna do the first one? I think. Uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah. yeah. So 50, mil, 50 years old, so a 70 years old kidney patient with history of um, breast cancer. Mm -hmm. This case on, this one. Yeah. on her septum and echo septum, this is a new murmur. So, person along the axis view are uh, showing uh, severe left ventricular dysfunction uh, with mild dilated right ventricle. Uh, mitral valve here on the plane one is uh, showing thickening of both leaflets. So, but there is no particular pattern. So having further consideration and looking on the color uh, flow Doppler. So there is at least moderate grade of mitral valve regurgitation. Uh, Probably it's an off-axis image because I can see part of the tricuspid valve as well. So an apical four axis, uh, apical four chamber view. And the anterior mitral valve leaflet is showing the tip probably is having a uh, either a flail segment or it looks more likely to be a flail segment of the anterior mitral valve leaflet. It's again off axis image because intermittently I can see an apical five chamber view. The color flow Doppler on the other side is showing again, uh, confirming moderate mitral valve regurgitation with posterior directed jet. Uh, Still direct the jet and this at 63. So I'd like to obtain further information to confirm that uh, this is a moderate grade. So Evical 2 chamber view, and again confirming the same findings as before. Uh, probably I can grade it here moderate to severe, but uh, probably would uh, be able to obtain further information as well for accurate measurement. So that's a pulse wave Doppler across the pulmonary valve, uh, uh, the pulmonary vein. Uh, and that's showing ST I can't see any systolic reversal, so probably that won't be severe. And this uh, pulse wave Doppler across the mitral valve and uh, the LV inflow across the mitral valve leaflets, and this showing an E wave uh, velocity of around 1.2 uh, 
uh, I think it's averaging 1.26 uh, out of the three or four measurements that have been done, which again denotes probably there is an element of severity. So I would still grade it between moderate and severe as I can't really see a reversal of the flow across the palm line. So to summarize? To summarize, this is a moderate uh, mitral valve regurgitation with normal LV function. Uh, in the context, uh, sorry, it's severely impaired the left ventricular systolic function. So again, with this in the context uh, of the severity of the LV dysfunction, probably this could be underestimated uh, mitral valve regurgitation. What do you think of the etiology? Uh, the etiology probably could be uh, related to the Herceptin. Um, yeah. So severe LV dysfunction, I think, you know, there was one more thing, you know, I always try to mention about the regional wall motion abnormalities, yeah. because sometimes mm -hmm. there is ischemic cardiomyopathy, it's important to comment on those, mm -hmm. because there was septal like analysis. And uh, agree, moderate MR, you didn't mention about the atrials, so mm -hmm. the atrial dilatation yes, was there. Yeah. And uh, I agree, it's a primary moderate mm -hmm. MR, inflammatory, related to chemotherapy induced cardiomyopathy. Yeah. Okay. Luis, do you want to take the second one? Okay. Um, it's close to my close. Oh. <laughs> so, really so, a 79 year old female, known hypertension, diabetes, and congestive cardiac failure, admitted with shortness of breath, echo to assess left heart function. It's more the brightness of the screen. You can use the bigger one. Okay, so looking at this, I can't see a pericardial effusion. The right ventricle may be a little bit dilated. The septal thickness may be a little bit enlarged. The LV function is probably reduced overall, but I can't assess that just in this, this window. The aortic valve, as far as I can see, looks normal. The mitral valve looks thickened. I can't really see if there's, if there's posterior prolapse on that because I could just can't see the detail. Okay, so looking at, there's very mild trivial aortic regurgitation. There's an eccentric jet of mitral regurgitation directed towards the anterior which probably means it's coming from the posterior mitral leaflet. You really need to slow it down, but I suspect there may be an element of prolapse, but I would need to be able to slow it down to look, to see the movement. And I'd like some color across that. If, there does look like there is. So uh, the inferior and the infralateral, the inferior wall is akinetic. The infraseptal wall is probably akinetic. The septal wall is hypokinetic. The anterior. Well, that's all ventricle. So the anterior is kind of poking up there. The anterior may be okay and the anterolateral kind of indeterminate on that view. So there are segmental problems. Sure. 
So um, LV function is at least moderately reduced. The actual mitral valve on this view looks normal. I can't see any major thickening or calcification. The left atrium is enlarged, right atrium is enlarged. The right, the atrial in, interseptum is kind of wobbling around in the middle. So that mean, that might mean that there are equal pressures either side. The, gen, the direction of the jet is obviously quite eccentric. And I'd like to measure the pulmonary um, venous pulse doppler. On the two chamber view, we can see that the anterior wall is not too bad. The inferior wall function is markedly reduced. Still see the mitral regurgitation. So this is the pulmonary valve pulse doppler. This is somewhere where I put the gain up a bit, you know, but you can see that there's systolic reversal. So that suggests that the, the grading of the mitral regurgitation is severe and it's underestimated by virtue of jet area because it's eccentric. So to summarize, what do you think what's going on? So I think the, I'd need the measurement of the left ventricle, but I suspect what's happening is that the left ventricle is dilated and therefore interfering with mitral valve coaptation due to remodeling. And what do you think was the etiology of MR? So I think it's a functional MR based, based on remodeling. So, so severe systolic dysfunction. So you mentioned inferior wall echinacea a few times. So I think, so it's ischemic cardiomyopathy causing yeah. MR. Not oh, interesting. Because there's a good going regional wall, so there's the inferior wall was akinetic. So that's the reason of MRI. Yeah, but that, look. Because in functional MR, you shouldn't be having those in regional wall motion changes. Oh, right. Okay. That should be central. Yeah. That should be central, Jack. Yeah. Functional Yes. So severe MR due to ischemic cardiomyopathy. Very good. Okay. Good half idea. <laughs> Almost there. Yeah. Um, Summer, do you want to do the third one? Vishal, I think I'll uh, pass it over. I don't think I can do <laughs> so well like others. And I'm just trying to imbibe what you are saying. That's all. <laughs> so, and who else is online? Sorry, I can't see it. Jamal, do you want to do one? Next one? Um, sure, I'm in theatre, but, uh, but I'll be here. Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, we're about to go. Well, we're a bit, bit away from going on pump, but let me know. I'll give it a shot. No, no problem. Kedar, do you want to do it? Next one? No, no, I'm okay. We'll, oh, we'll okay, put sure. it on. I'm sure. just. Uh, no, uh, all right, right. Don't, so... don't, don't forget to put your patient on pump. So. Uh, 35 <laughs> year old man, IVDU, uh, positive strip. All right. So. Uh, all right, so these are toe views. So this is very helpful because it's uh, familiar. So on the left here, we had a, a mid-esophageal four-chamber view. Um, and I think probably the most pertinent finding on this at zero degrees is that he has gross abnormalities of both of the mitral valve leaflets, so anterior and posterior valve leaflets. Um, they're thickened. Um, there is more mobility. And I think probably the more concerning, it's a bit hard to sell, but the leaflet tips look thickened, but the posterior leaflet on my screen looks thickened with an abnormality on it, which given the clinical history is probably going to be infective endocarditis. Yep. And uh, the second screen, so he's got an appropriate gain setting again, mid esophageal four chamber, but with uh, color on it this time. Uh, again, there is a significant degree of mitral regurgitation. Um, 
it's you'd have to pause and cine through it, but it looks like there may be. No, you'd have to cine before. It's either going to be a coaptation defect, or given the clinical history, it's entirely possible here as a posterior leaf perforation. Sure. But you would want to focus more on that. Uh, so this is uh, again. These are still going to be probably going to be on the left. That's an esophageal four chamber, but. We've obviously gotten rid of some of the RV, which is unnecessary focusing on the mitral valve leaflets. And again, the consistent appearance here, which is grossly thickened anterior and posterior leaflets. Um, the posterior leaflet is uh, probably more damaged than the anterior. Um, it would be difficult to say how much of this is uh, from you know, endocarditis lesion um, and how much is from leaflet destruction. Uh, the posterior leaflet on the left view looks like it may be prolapsing into the left atrium. I would want to see a view at 120 degrees before I made any comments about whether it was billowing or prolapsing above the annular plane, but it does definitely look like some of these abnormalities that there you go. Now that it's slowed and cineed, you can see that it's billowing up into the left atrium. And uh, the second view is a 60 degree, which would classically be a mid commissure view um, with kind of the anterior leaflet coming up in the middle, uh, P1, A2, P3 classically. Um, it's hard to say, as I said, views thus far have suggested that the posterior leaflet is more affected, but if these leaflets are what they're supposed to be, there is significant uh, abnormality of the anterior leaflets. You'd want to put color on that. There looks like it could be set up for a perforation in this view there, there again. Um, but again, I'd want color on that. This man could have almost anything uh, causing his MR. Uh, so as requested, colour now. So this is on the left there. It's going to be a kind of um, 90 degree focused mitral valve. Um, I don't know if that adds anything that might be more consistent of a kind of mid-com view than we had previously. But there is still that concerning appearance of whether or not there's an abnormality kind of more over to the P3 part of the leaflet. Um, but again, without color and here with color. So yeah, so this is probably the better view we've had more recently on the right, which is there. So look, I think with the appropriate Nyquist at 60, you have uh, a jet that seems to curve up uh, into the left atrium. And at least at this view, take up a large degree of left atrium. So although on kind of area of jet, it's not great, the suggestion that it's got a coandra effect and it's kind of eccentrically directed jet up into the left atrium yeah. um, would push you more towards severe MR. But given the morphology of the leaflet, the likely etiology, the potential for perforation, the destruction of the leaflet, and this appearance of MR, um, Look, I'd be going more towards severe MR. All right, so uh, so this is spectral Doppler. So the um, image up on the top, it looks like it's it's at twenty degrees of omniplane with appropriate Nyquist setting. Um, it's hard for me to say where the. It looks like continuous wave, so I guess that's looking back at the regurgitation jets. Is that what we're looking at? But it looks quite yeah, filled, not, I guess. Uh, the quality jet, but yes. Yeah, but so look, I mean, if this is continuous wave spectral Doppler going back into the left atrium, um, that's quite filled in, um, which I guess is going some way to building up a picture of the severity of the MR. And this is now on the right over here. It's an interesting place to get a pulmonary vein, but I suspect that's a pulmonary vein. So we've got yes. gated spectral Doppler in a structure which is most likely the uh, one of the upper pulmonary veins, potentially left upper, and mm -hmm. whether or not this can, appearance is consistent with blunting of the pulmonary vein flow, but keeping in mind that there are four pulmonary veins, this is blunting in one, and given the potential etiology for this MR, it could be eccentric, um, I would yeah. want to be looking at some of the other pulmonary veins. But yeah. it's all building towards you know, this is this is not mild. Uh, the decision is whether or not this is moderate to severe, and this is building towards a severe uh, severity of MR. 
So I don't have the, you know, the view from the second pulmonary vein, but from the second pulmonary vein as well, we got the same, um, almost the same Doppler profile. Yep, yep. So to summarize, what do you think in terms of severity and etiology? Um, so this is, as you say, it's a 35 year old gentleman with known history of uh, IVDU. He's got blood, blood, blood culture positive. Um, uh, I think it was staph, was it? Or strep? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so look, I mean, I think the, the most likely clinical diagnosis here is infective endocarditis, is mitral valve. Um, you know, there's, uh, this, there is a grossly abnormal mitral valve leaflets, both anterior and posterior, at least on the images I've seen, posterior more than anterior. There is eccentrically directed mitral regurgitation of uh, at least moderate, if not severe severity with, uh, you know, suggestions on continuous wave Doppler um, of a lot of flow into the left atrium and also two out of four pulmonary veins with uh, blunting. Um, the etiology is uncertain. It could definitely be perforation. Um, we'd have to consider the mobile echolysis, anterior foster. Yep, yep, moderate. Moderate. Hang All right, on. Sure. Fine. Hang on. It's very good, Jamal. 10 out of 10. You can put your patient back on, on, the, on the pump now. So. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I got to follow for. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jamal. Um, Anne Marie, you want to let me the last one. Do we get it? You can do it there. Uh, Sorry, I think your voice may not be Sorry. 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 Sixty-eight year old female needs to be applied to the as we can see the season AF, admitted with shortness of breath, requiring intubation for respiratory failure, post intubation, high dose pressors, echo to assess LV and RV function and cause of shock. Okay, parasomal long axis view. Um, the left ventricle looks dilated. The function is impaired. The left atrium is dilated. The E point septal separation is reduced. The right ventricle also looks dilated. And the aortic valve looks normal on this view. I'd want to see it in other views. On color, there's an eccentric posteriorly directed jet, um, which seems to occupy about 50% of the left atrium, which is in itself dilated. So immediately I'd be bearing towards severe mitral regurgitation, um, but I'd want to confirm that in other views. Um, Parasomal short axis at the level of the pillory muscles, again, impaired function, um, I'd say severely reduced systolic function, which appears global. Um, and again, you can see mitral regurge on the color flow Doppler um, at the level of the uh, mitral valve. So apical four chamber, um, severe biatrial dilatation, a small pericardial effusion, uh, severely impaired biventricular function. Um, so this is consistent with a dilated cardiomyopathy with all four chamber dilatation. Um, with central mitral regurgitation, which would appear functional in nature due to the annular dilatation and the and it would be chronic um, because of both the dilatation of the atria and the ventricles. Um, two chamber view, again, um, there's a dilated coronary sinus, which would make me suspicious as associated pulmonary hypertension, more evidence it may be long-standing mitral regurgitation, again, severe, um, severely dilated left atrium, severely impaired systolic function, and what appears to be a severe um, mitral regurgitant jet. Again, I just want to confirm with pulmonary veins and um, continuous wave Doppler. Uh, so continuous wave Doppler on the left, there is a fairly dense triangular early peaking waveform, which would um, me towards again severe um, mitral regurgitation and the pulmonary veins this time not convinced there's a reversal, but certainly systolic blunting. Um, Can you show me with the cursor which is S, which is T? So I'm assuming that this is the QRS. So this is S yeah. and this is D. So not blunting at all, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And no reversal yeah. on that one. But again, there are other pulmonary veins that could be assessed. Um, left atria, the area um, 20 would be normal, and the jet area is more than 50, that would be consistent with severe, according to the ASE guidelines. Uh, vena contractor more than seven, which would be severe, and the E wave 
the E wave is less than 1.2, which doesn't fit with um, severe. But so, that may be due to the raised left ventricular end diastolic pressure, maybe reducing the E wave velocity, the inflow velocity, because the, um, the clock function is so impaired. So, so what do you think to summarize, because there's some disagreements between different parameters? So I still think that this is a dilated cardiomyopathy, which is chronic with a functional um, severe central mitral regurgitant jet. So this was the order. So the global systolic dysfunction, and because there was no systolic reversal, you know, in two pulmonary veins, and uh, and patient was on a lot of vasopressors. So we reported as moderate MR, but 100%, you know, we we had a lot of you know discussion about that of severe based on the contract and everything. So I agree, you know, annual dilatation and significant component of functional MR. But you can, you know, argue it could be severe. Thank you. Yeah. So those were the cases, and uh, so main conclusion. So this is the you know slide I just you know added just a few minutes ago after Sam sent the paper this morning. So which is you know very nice paper. So I think three important things we you know to consider every time you see MR. So what is the mechanism? So always go through what's the, you know, carpentry classification point of view, what's the leaflet motion and what's the leaflet uh, morphology. Then the severity of MR. So, so make sure that uh, you, know, you consider all the parameters uh, uh, of the MR before considering in terms of severity. And mm -hmm. also always be aware of what the different pitfalls of different parameters. And also, what's the consequence of uh, consequences of MR on the left atrium, left ventricle, pulmonary circulations? So, after considering all those things, only then consider in terms of severity and what could be the possible mechanism and what's the possible treatment. So, yes, that was it. Any questions? If you learned something, hit like and subscribe to our channel for more videos uploaded weekly. For bite sized versions, follow us on Twitter at Echo Nepean and check out the tutorials. Or head over to our websites for the latest hands on courses. Links in the channel banner. And thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.